There's something else though. Um, you did you run the uh, uh, the B and C and D uh, uh, segments or whatever for Europe as well? Yes. Yeah, so in various jobs uh, through my career, I, I I worked on all the different segments of vehicles and commercials as well. They're really important when I was in Europe. Transits absolutely huge uh, around the world, but even more so in Europe. Um, yeah. So yes, yeah, so that so I went to each different class of vehicle, which had different customers, but the one that was most challenging is B segment. So small cars like Fiesta yeah. Yeah. and those, I mean, it was almost, almost impossible to make money with huge investments. And, um, I had some amazing mentors along the way. And one of them was a, a person I would call more businessman than product development. And, uh, he really inspired us of how we could make at the time, the next generation of Fiesta. It was the point we just couldn't make any money. And we were saying, how can we justify billions of investment that makes no money ever? And he helped back then us to understand that we they, they have to be distinctive. They have to pull customer desire. And then the customer will then be willing to pay more for something they really like rather than a, a commodity, which is, I guess, obvious. But in that B-car similar, difficult to achieve. So that really taught us, and, and especially in the time in quality, it taught us hey, we really need to stand for something. Making a generic product is, is not really, is not doesn't have a, ha have a happy ending. And as we're moving into EVs, that has been a guiding light for us. So uh, when we started working on the, you know, in T-Medicine, what, where should we play and, and what will be distinct for Ford? We started that together with some amazing people, Ted Canis, you know, and, and others. And we, and we said, what should we make? And, and that input of we're not going to make a generic car or be try and be someone else. Um, we got to be you know, for us, Ford. And what do we bring to the table? So eventually it led to we're going to make a Mustang Mach-E and we're going to make a Transit, any Transit, we're going to make a Lightning, um, an F-150, because these are areas that Ford has have excelled in the past. And, you know, we want to make a more emotional electric car with the Mac E and that's what we worked set out to do. Uh, we didn't have a GT actually early on. And uh, once we realized, Hey, this needs to be a Mustang, we had to add the GT and that's why it launched a year later. I'm so pleased we did that one. The transit was more obvious and we used a lot of parts from the electric vehicles. And then of course the big one was the trucks and, and how to go about the trucks. But the input, what we gave was they must be distinctive. They must do things that you haven't had before and inspire customers. And so the mega power frunk and the bi-directional power, they were outcomes of that. We didn't know that they would be important for the truck. It was when we started the work of, hey, what can electric offer? There were a lot of things it could do, but which things do we think would inspire customers? And at the time, you know, we said, Let, let's get out of the office and go and see customers. And, and we went around the world and I, I said, actually, let's go to the toughest place you can think of for an electric truck. And, and we said, it was Texas. Let's go to Texas where people really, you know, they're really serious about their trucks and let's see what they think and talk to them about the different things it could do and had no idea what to expect. And, and, and we, well, on the day, we didn't get back what we expected either, but we tested, we tested a few things and the front went crazy. I've got more stories about that. And and the bi-directional went crazy. They were the two things people said, hey, that, that could, I don't have that today. That could be really yeah. useful to me. And they were the things actually that triggered the most interest. Afterwards, the fact it's faster than most sports cars and so on. Yeah, that comes, but they kind of expected that a little bit of electric. It was the those new things that it brought to the table they didn't expect. And they've, they've really attracted a lot of people to Ford that were, didn't buy Ford before. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you the, uh, the big thing about the truck and, um, and the Mach-E, uh, is that that was bold. Um, and, and that's an understatement to take the, the crown jewels of uh, a Ford motor company and saying, we're going to, we're going to make that happen. All, all the, I mean, I'm not the first one to say this, but all the other car companies, they decided they were going to put out like, um, you know, the Fiat 
500e i mean i i it's it's a nice little car i guess but at the end of the day that's not a giant risk and when you look at general motors or even like bmw uh if they would have brought out something different than the uh than the i the the bmw i3 if they would have brought out something that was dazzling like for instance i worked for we monroe and associates worked for bmw on the mini and um the the choice for the mini was simple do we get rid of it or do we or do we start producing something different and it was the same sort of conversation if we're going to do something with this thing it has to be a real mini and it has to attract new customers because it wasn't even allowed in there were so many countries you, you couldn't bring the mini in so that was a big deal but and and quite frankly it's the only thing that bmw kept they scrapped everything else that they had with rover <clears throat> and the reason for that was because it had something unique ford going over and saying okay well um we're gonna take the um basically the mustang which i mean that is the big vehicle i uh everybody when i was a kid everybody aspired to get a, a mustang uh and 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 the and the f-150 holy mackerel it, it doesn't get any bigger for rolling the bones than the two biggest uh the two biggest names that ford has got and and everybody else decided, well, let's just put a nickel into the game. You can't win, um, at least not for me anyway, you can't win unless you, uh, unless you uh, get in with both feet and certainly Ford has done that. I mean, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm amazed that, uh, that that decision got me. How did that decision happen? Yeah, well, well um, so, so our leadership had, we tried to do some electric vehicles. I mean, you, you know, you know, some of the ones that we worked on um, in the past and we were dabbling like others were and we have a good, a good business running and you've got a hundred year old company. So what do you do? And we had a lot of fits and starts and it didn't work. And our, our, and our leadership said, hey, this is not working at all. They could see how electric cars were, gonna, were going and they said, hey, if we carry on like this, we, we're just going to keep dabbling. So we either need to buy an electric car company, or, or which then you need to integrate, or we need to try something different. So our leadership at the time, and Jim Farley was there, said, like, hey, we, let's try something. So they put a guy called uh, Ted Canis in for Team Edison, who's an amazing business person, and he's did transformations all over the world, and said, put together a team and try and work out where to play and how to win. And so that's what happened. And he called me and I joined the team and, and, and some others, a small, a small team. And they freed us of any uh, previous obligations that we had and said, just go and look at the market, talk to customers and work out where you think we should maybe play. And so within a couple of weeks, we were going all around the world and talking to customers, of course, of customers of Tesla and of other successful co companies in this space uh, in US, in all parts of US and Norway and um, China, and we and we really just talked to customers, and were thinking about what might we stand for. And along the way, we sit, we saw what heavy bets some competitors had made, and how they were great products. And we said, how are we going to? What will matter to people? And we realized pretty quickly that these are these are technology products, and and the, the EV revolution is massive, but the software revolution is equal, I think, bigger. And we realized that very quickly and for and then we we worked out which, which spaces would we like to play in and it needs to be a space where ford could be relevant and so the mid-size suv was the first, the first one and we did have a car in development but it wasn't that car and then of course the commercial space and then of course Air lightning so they they were the spaces we wanted to play in that perhaps ford has a good relevance and then the question was how will we how will we delight customers and what do we stand for? We're not going to copy somebody or we'll make something th that they did. We've got to do something what's relevant. And we work, worked out pretty quickly, you know, if we need every, we need to be all in. I mean, you know, if, we get, if we're going to delight a customer, we can't go halfway. And we had a Ford Focus version two in the works, but a Ford Focus version two was not going to cut it against such competent competition. And, and we heard that from the customers who bought those cars. So we said, hey, we need, we need a different level of commitment and a different game. And so that led us to what, what if, and what if 
it could be a Mustang. And then it, it quickly led to, well, it, it better it better be good enough. It, what does it offer? How? Why, why would you use such an amazing brand? Yeah, you know, really. I for me, the history there's only two brands super relevant in that space in 50 years, and it's Porsche 911 and it's Mustang. So you don't just do that lightly, and you, you had to prove that it could be worth it. So we started to think about it. Then we started to try out some products. Then we realized the motors were not good enough. Then we realized the interior wasn't good enough. Then the tech wasn't good enough. And we went around the company and said, we need something better. And we worked out what can be done to work in an agile way. And we added a GT. And, and then we worked with the Mustang team about what makes a Mustang special. And they helped us make sure there was exciting elements to the car. And one of my favorites was engaging the the performance team, Ford Performance. And they said, this thing's got a handle like a Mustang. And they put it in one of the most advanced racing simulators in the world, long before we had product. And it's so accurate that they can make small changes in the chassis of the vehicle and the person driving it can feel those like a real car. They, they use them for that car simulation as well. Just amazing. And we put some pretty superstars in those and they tuned that car to feel like a Mustang. So it, it's got a rear bias, it yours when you uh, add some acceleration in a corner. And, and actually, the subframes weren't stiff enough because the battery is so stiff. And we had to change things. And we ended up, long story short, we ended up redoing the whole subframes for the GT. And then we just rolled them back to all of the Mustangs. So why, why, why differentiate? So it's on all of Mac E now. So that was really fun. But it we came to the conclusion it needed to be a Mustang. And then we we had we worked with some you know Bill Ford in the company who's so passionate about Mustang about what it could be and he he had come to that conclusion already he said for the next generation Mustang needs to be a wee car for my tribe and then he he completely supported us so he that's how we came to Mustang and then it had to be good enough so and and then it, when we came to launch it you saw that was a bold move it was controversial and. We worked through, you know, it's a long story. We worked with lots of the uh, owners and clubs as we went into launch.